الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Once again, I have the honor to be amongst you discussing the holy verses of the Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of the Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and by the blessing of the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam to be able to bring the teachings of the holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam more into our lives then insha'Allah we will attain salvation in this world and hereafter insha'Allah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alif Lam Meem ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه خدا للمتقين. Before starting the discussion about Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the holy verse of Quran, we are left with one or two points about the last verse of the Surah Al-Hamd, uh, which we were not able to cover within the previous episode. Inshallah, we just touch base upon it, and then we will continue our discussion and start Surah Al-Baqarah. And asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to be able to uh, have long life to inshallah finish Surah Al Baqarah and continue as our mission was inshallah to continue all the way to the last chapter of the Holy Quran. Surah Al Ladin al Amta alayhim, we said people are within three groups either they are being blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are on the right path and they are receiving Allah's blessing and Allah's na'mah, and then there are two other groups. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. مغضوب are those people who are who are receiving Allah's wrath, and as we discussed, those are they are the people who are seeing the truth. They have been informed and educated and are uh, getting introduced to the truth, but unfortunately, they decide stubbornly to go 180 degrees opposite of the truth. They are trying to not uh, follow the truth. So they go completely the opposite. They are receiving Allah's wrath. And we said, according to the narrations of Ahlul Bayt السلام, especially Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, that uh, one example of those people who are receiving Allah's wrath are the Jews, Yahud. Because they are seeing the truth. They have been exposed to the truth. Truth has been shown to them, but they decided uh, to follow their Satan, the inner Satan and the outer Satan and to deviate and completely go 180 degrees opposite of the truth. For example, we see after that uh, Prophet Musa was able to rescue them from Pharaoh and after they finished crossing that sea, and they saw the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Prophet Musa, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was able to perform that miracle and split the sea completely wide open. And he made 12 paths for them because there were 12 tribes and he made 12 paths for them. As soon as they crossed the sea and the sea uh, took in Pharaoh and his army, they saw people are worshipping idols. They asked Prophet Musa السلام, to create us idol that we want to worship because they are worshiping idols and there are many other examples so they are the one example of maghdubi alayhim that receive allah's wrath are jews and anyone else within the history after being exposed to the truth after being introduced to the truth after being after the truth has been revealed to them as clear as it can get and they decide to go to the opposite and not follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam, they will be receiving Allah's wrath. The second, waladalin, those who have been deviated, those who have been mischiefed, as we read within the translation of this segment, that they are they are astray. They are not going to the opposite, the same way as the first people. They are trying to find the truth, but the truth has not been, uh, they have not found the truth completely. And they might be going aside a little bit, left or right, not on the right path, definitely. So, we don't want to be amongst those people who are, who are receiving Allah's wrath, nor who are astray. 
which an example with a narration, narration that an example of those people who have been astray are the Christian Jews to be receiving Allah's wrath and the Christians receiving, uh, they're going astray because they're thinking they are on the right path, they're hoping that they're on the right path, but unfortunately they are going astray. We, have, we concluded this section with uh, narration from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which we have it in Tafsir al-Burhan where Rasulullah says Qala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi fi qawlillah azza wa jal sarata al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa al-dhalin qala shi'atu aliyin Shia of Ali, the followers of Ali, those who followed the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, in his teachings, in the madhab, and all that he said, and he, he commanded people to do, the Shia of Ali, are those people, alladheena an'amta alayhim bi wilayat Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Shia of Ali, those who follow the path of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, those are the people who, O oh Allah, you have blessed them with the most important blessing and that is to have the guardianship of Amir al-Mu'mineen above their head and to believe in the guardianship of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, they are being blessed. Lam yaghdib alayhim wa lam yudildu. They are not receiving Allah's wrath and they are not astray. Then inshaAllah, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a true Shia of Ali, a true and genuine follower of the commander of the faithful Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam that requires us and that brings us to a good action plan reminding us of our previous action plans and also adding another action plan that us reading the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam alongside the teachings of the holy verses of Quran as we if you remember those who are following us within the first couple of episodes we said that inshallah we have the Quran and the book Tuhaf al next to our sajjada, next to our prayer mat. Every morning we read, inshallah, if we have the time, 50 verses of the Holy Quran, and then we read a translation, and then we take one verse of the Holy Quran. This is a reminder for myself and all of us, the viewers. So we will take that verse of Quran, those verses that we read the translation, and then we take one verse, and we think and ponder about that one verse, how we can bring that one verse into our lives. So at the end of the year, that will be 365 verses of the Holy Quran which has impacted our life and has influenced our lives, inshallah, toward better. And next to those verses of Quran that we read and that's one verse that we think and ponder, we read one narration, one hadith of the life from the lives of Ahl al-Bayt and we try to bring into our lives. Another kitab, another book, that we recommend is Ghurar al-Hakam, the sayings of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam in addition to Nahj al-Balagh. If we want to be a true Shia of Ali, true followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, we have to see what they have commanded us to do. How can we learn of those commands? We have to basically read them. The narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam, alhamdulillah, thanks to all of our scholars, have compiled them and have put them into books and they are available for us inshallah. Let us not forget these action plans. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Alif, Lam, Mim. We're starting Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Holy, verses, uh, Holy Book of Allah, the Holy Quran. al-Kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil This is the book. There is no doubt in it, a guidance to the pious. As we know, this chapter was revealed in Medina and it's called the cow, Al-Baqarah and has 286 verse, verses in it. Question might arise in your mind and you might think about it, why each of the verses, chapters of the Holy Quran has been named what it has been named. We have some of, the, uh, some of the chapters of the Holy Quran, they've been named after the animals. For example, Surah Al-Fil, chapter of the elephant. Surah Al-Naml, the ant. And Baqarah, the cow. Or we have after the names of the uh, prophets. Or we have other names of the verses of the chapters of the Holy Quran. So what is the point? What is the purpose behind it? Every chapter has a theme in it. And that brings us also to another 
uh, point that some commentators of the Holy Quran, they, they argue that the verses of the Quran within one chapter, they're not necessarily related to one another. There are different verses that talks about different points and not necessarily uh, they are related and then they don't have any connection to one another. But other commentators, which makes more sense, it's more logical, their argument is that every chapter has one main point, one theme, one idea that all of the other, all the verses of uh, that chapter, it's somehow related to this one main idea, one topic, one general uh, objective that Allah has that He's trying to get to you and I for us to understand it. So, Al-Baqarah, there's a theme in it, Surah Al-Baqarah. It's not about the cow itself. Uh, that all, let us think about the cow and what is the importance of the cow. No, the story behind the cow and where the story took place which was in Bani Israel, during the time of Bani Israel, the children of Israel, and the stories behind Bani Israel and that community, which we see a lot of times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the story of Prophet Musa and his nation, Bani Israel. The stories of Prophet Musa and Bani Israel has been mentioned probably more than the stories of other prophets. So there is one theme, one idea that we see the rest of the verses of the whole, uh, this chapter, it's about and it circumambulates around this one main idea, one main topic. According to commentators, that Allah brings a nation, brings an example. If an, every nation has some strength and some weaknesses, there are some points that are very strong, some acts of theirs are very strong, if they act upon these one, two, three, four, five elements, this nation will be strong, it will be firm, it will be together, it will be unbreakable. But there are other, there are other elements that any nation, if they follow these five, six, seven negative actions, if they act upon these actions, they will be destroyed, they will be breakable, they won't be able, they won't be firm together, they won't attain salvation. So, this is somehow the main point, main platform for this chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah. So, so that's the main point. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the story of Baqarah, the cow, and what happened, inshallah, it will come in the future. And the nation of Prophet Musa, Bani Israel, he brings evidence that the time that Bani Israel, they followed the actions and the plans that Prophet Musa had. And they followed the divine path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was their strength. They were together, they were committed, they were unbreakable. But when they decided that they will go against the teachings of Prophet Musa and they will go against the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they were scattered and they were not one united ummah. So it is very important for us to keep in mind that every nation, the same thing applies to you and I as a Muslim nation. The stories of the Holy Quran is not for us to read it and just move on. If you remember, we mentioned why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings stories, why He gives us role models. He brings us role model as an individual. He brings us role model as a community as a family, as a society, that look at the nations before you, look at the communities before you, look at the societies before you, look at the families before you, what they did, learn from them. If they do the good things that they did and they partake in good endeavors, well, do partake in those endeavors and you will attain salvation in dunya and akhira. And look at their lives, read their lives, Try to comprehend it. See where was, what was there missing in their lives. Well, try to learn those. To l try to remove those uh, misconceptions and negativity within your community, within your families, within your societies, and you will attain salvation. So, Surah Al-Baqarah and 
the story of the cow and Bani Israel, they go all on the platform for our communities, for our societies. We want to be united. We want to come together. Okay, let's see what we need to do. Let's look at the story of Bani Israel. Where was the time that they went astray? Where was the time that they didn't pay attention? And we make sure we don't follow on those, in those traps. Inshallah, the rest of the talk in the next episode, inshallah, we will conclude asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi, Allah ta'ala, Faraj al-Sharif, which is the most important dua, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of tonight, by the blessing of the shrines of Ahl Bayt, salam, and by the blessing, alhamdulillah, we have reigned here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi, Allah ta'ala, Faraj al-Sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكن وارضك طوعا وتمتعوا فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين